Welcome to the City of Roswell City Ordinances for Realtors and Property Managers Virtual Seminar, a seven-part series of informational videos. You will hear directly from the City of Roswell's experts on our Geographic Information System, or GIS, permitting, code enforcement, and utilities. Topics to be discussed will include resources and beneficial programs available to homeowners, when permitting is required for projects and improvements, ordinances that realtors, managers, and potential buyers should be aware of, and how to set up city services. Hello, I'm Adam Lyon, Stormwater Utility Manager for the City. My goal in this short presentation is to show that a little knowledge about stormwater on your part can result in a significant added value for your services to your clients. I'll start with a quick primer on public stormwater infrastructure. The city only maintains infrastructure that is on city property or that has been dedicated to and accepted by the city. So if there is stormwater infrastructure on a property, it's very likely going to be private and privately maintained. On our website, you can find this infographic about our level of service and extent of service. It's designed to address the most common questions regarding stormwater for our residents. And you'll see that it's got things like ponds and creeks and cross drains and driveway culverts, ditches, and it's a very easy one-stop place for residents or prospective residents to look at what stormwater features may be their responsibility versus the city's. The practical application of that is that if you observe stormwater structures on a piece of property you are looking at for your client, Regardless of who owns the structures, there will be effects on the purchaser of that property. If it's city-owned infrastructure, none of these things last forever. So the potential exists that they will need to be maintained and or replaced. And the excavation required to replace pipe will obviously disrupt the yard. If it's privately owned, then the potential exists, again, the, these things don't last forever, that the resident may need to do maintenance, repairs, or replacement on those infrastructure items. And on this slide, I just put some of the most common things we see that you may spot on a piece of property that would lead you to look deeper into what is actually under the ground. And the top left hand is just a pipe, plain pipe end. Right-hand side's a catch basin. Now, any catch basin like that's going to be associated with pipe. Again, the bottom left hand is a graded drop inlet that would be located in like a low spot in the yard. Also, to the bottom right is a head wall, again, indicating that there's stormwater infrastructure on the property. Another feature to watch out for on private property are ponds detention or recreational ponds. And a detention pond would obviously be a dry pond that only holds water immediately after a rain, usually 36 to 48 hours, or a recreational pond like is shown in the image here, which holds water as an amenity. Both of these ponds are going to necessarily slow down water that flows into them and hold it, and therefore they're going to collect silt and debris that'll have to be cleaned out. And in the case of detention ponds, Trees growing in those ponds are actually detrimental to their function and would need to be removed on occasion. And trees growing on the impoundment or dam of either type of pond will actually destroy that structure and could lead to extremely expensive repair cost. Bottom line is the property owner's responsibility is to ensure that the pond functions as it was designed, meaning that it will hold the capacity, the amount of water that it was designed to hold, and that it will release that water at the rate that it was designed to release it at. And so anything that changes those variables would require maintenance to get back to that design criteria. So the property owner is going to be the responsible party for maintaining 
pods. And you'll see in these two plat segments I've got, the one on the left is a more modern plat. That's the way things are done now. You'll see that there's a detention pond in the bottom right-hand corner is marked detention C. It is on a separate parcel that is owned by the HOA. Therefore, the maintenance of that pond is the responsibility of the HOA. On the plat segment, you'll see to the right, it's an older segment. This is not allowed anymore, but it's quite often the case that ponds will be on an individual property owner's lot or across several parcels as it is on this plat. And in this case, these four property owners that the pond spans their property, they are all owners of the pond and bear some responsibility for the maintenance of that pond. Easements. Oftentimes you'll see easements across pieces of property and in the case of stormwater, a drainage easement is definitionally different from a conventional easement like for sanitary sewer, water line, power, gas. Those easements are for the maintenance of infrastructure owned by a municipality or a business that's in that easement. A drainage easement is actually an easement to document the historical path that water has flowed in the past and to ensure that water will be able to flow there in the future. In the case where the city-owned infrastructure is also in that easement, homeowner would need to know that there are certain things that you can't do above that city-owned infrastructure. You can't build fences or structures and anything that is above that pipe, if they do install a fence or they do plantings above that pipe, those things would necessarily be forfeit if the pipe had to be replaced. It's best to know that going in and not after you've already done those things. A drainage easement, they can't block a drainage easement. So if there's a, just a ditch across the property that's a drainage easement, you can't build a fence across it, you can't put trash in it, you can't park things in anything that would block or impede the flow of water through that easement is a violation and cannot be done. That's also best known before you purchase the property. Easements shown on plats are quite often one or two ways. On the plat segment to the left, you'll see that the developer did the bare minimum to get the roadway in. On crossway here, you'll see two boxes graphically representing the catch basins on the roadway. So they get the water off the road and then he just installed just enough pipe and some headwalls to get it out from under the curb and gutter and the shoulders and get his road in. And so on either side of that, the water is flowing in a ditch. In this case, this is dedicated to the city. Just these structures shown on this plat are public maintenance responsibility. And in this case, both of these homeowners did extend the pipe all the way across their property. And those extensions are the maintenance responsibility of those property owners or their successors. The, this plat segment to the right is a much more modern, much more residential layout where they have run pipe to the back of the parcels. And uh, the reason for that is to get them to the top or the bottom of a slope where they have much less erosive effect and to make the lots more desirable, not having ditches crossing them. In this case, these pipes would be city maintained and it's important for a homeowner to understand, like in the case of lot number 36 down in the bottom there, there's no storm structures actually on the lot that are visible from the surface, but there is a pipe under there that potentially in the future could need maintenance and it's good for them to know beforehand that the city could be coming in and replacing that pipe at some point in the future. One of the last things I want to cover about plats are notes. The notes are what actually establish the maintenance responsibilities on the parcels that they create and they run the gamut from one end of the spectrum to the other of responsibilities. The note that I have over to the left here is one end of the spectrum where the city has no responsibility or liability for flooding, erosion, storm drains, anything, and that the easements are only in place for the free flow of surface water and for the emergency repair of access in the case of the city. So if there is a, an emergency failure that could 
threaten a roadway, then the city could come in and do repairs in that easement on private property, but they would be able to bill the property owner for those repairs. That's one end of the spectrum. The other end of the spectrum up in the upper right-hand corner is the homeowners association is responsible, period. It's a very simple one. Most all are somewhere in between. The last note I have there is actually the most common note that we'll find where it says that the city is not responsible for extensions of culverts shown. And that's the only mention of culverts really in there. And the reason for that is that all the culverts shown are city, but any extension added on to them out after the date of the plat would be private. If you have any further questions, we've got a link to our website here, and you can reach me directly at alyon at roswellgov.com. Thank you.